Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So today we are going to start our new chapter which is corporate governance. So let's see what is corporate governance. Corporate means company and govern means to control. So what is corporate governance? Corporate governance is the means by which a company is operated and controlled. The aim of corporate governance is to ensure that companies are run well in the interest of their shareholders, employees, and other key stakeholders, such as the wider community. So if we say that the purpose of corporate governance is to ensure that the companies are managed and operated in the best interest of the shareholders and the other stakeholders, because you know, that the shareholders are not involved in managing the company directors controls the company and there were a few uh, cases like enron and worldcom where directors were doing you know fraud their salary and remuneration packages were very high and nothing was distributed to the shareholders so the aim is to try and prevent company directors from abusing the power which may adversely affect these stakeholder groups. For example, the directors may pay themselves large salaries and bonuses while claiming they have no money to pay a dividend to the shareholders. See if the remuneration package or the salary of the director is very high. Director's salary is an expense for the company. When expense is high, it is going to reduce the profit. And when the profit is reduced, it means that the dividend which is to be distributed amongst the shareholders is also reduced. The UK Corporate Governance Code introduced a set of best practice corporate governance initiatives into the UK. So the UK has its own code of corporate governance, which set out some principles, best practices that should be followed by the listed companies. Advantages of a company following good corporate governance principle are following. So let's see what are the advantages for the companies, for the listed companies which are following the principles of corporate governance. Although it has associated cost as well, but, but the advantages overweigh the cost. So the first advantage is greater transparency. The companies which follow the best practice of the corporate governance have greater transparency, all the relevant information is shared with the shareholders and the other stakeholders and greater transparency leads to greater confidence of shareholders and other stakeholders upon the decisions of the directors. Greater accountability. So greater transparency itself is going to create greater accountability. Then efficiencies of the operations because such companies have better control environment which improves the efficiency of the operations, better able to respond to the risk. Again, these companies which follows the best practice of the corporate governance have better risk management system, which enables the company to respond to the risk on timely basis and less likely to be mismanaged. All these factors, better internal controls, better risk management system helps the company to reduce the chances of mismanagement. Now let's discuss relevance of corporate governance to external audit because definitely corporate governance is related to the company about how company is directed and controlled and how is it related to external auditors work. If a company complies with corporate governance best practice, the control environment of the company is likely to be stronger. There will be greater focus on financial reporting and internal controls, which should reduce the risk, uh, the control risk and the inherent risk, which together reduces the risk of material misstatement in the financial statements. So those companies which follows the best practice of inter, uh, corporate governance have good internal control system, as well as good risk management system. Good internal control system reduces the control risk and good risk management system reduces the inherent risk and low inherent plus control risk collectively reduces the risk of material misstatement in the financial statements. So where the risk of material misstatement in the financial statements is low, auditor would have to perform less substantive procedures. So this is how it impacts the work of external auditors. So the uh, companies where good corporate governance 
practices are followed auditor would have to perform less substantive procedures then uh, let's discuss the corporate governance principles set out by the organization for economic cooperation and development its abbreviation is oecd oecd has set uh, has produced a set of six principles of corporate governance to guide policy makers when setting regulations for their own country oecd has basically developed some principles it has set uh, laid down some principles which could be followed as a benchmark by any country while developing their own code of corporate governance the six principles of oecd are number 1 ensuring the basis of an effective corporate governance framework this principle explains that it is the responsibility of the government and the regulatory authority to ensure the effective basis for corporate governance framework then the second principle is the rights of shareholders and key ownership as already explained the purpose of every corporate governance code is to ensure that the company is managed and controlled in the best interest of the shareholders so this principle very much explains the purpose of the codes of corporate governance then the third principle is the equitable treatment of shareholders this refers to the fact that minority shareholders should be treated equally as the majority shareholders like majority shareholders minority shareholders should also receive information related to the company and they should also get notices of journal meeting like annual journal meeting and extraordinary journal meeting then the fourth principle is the role of stakeholders in corporate governance like external auditors internal auditors employees of the company and journal community next principle is disclosure and transparency as already explained the main focus of corporate governance is to increase transparency in the listed companies so that no relevant information is kept hidden from shareholders and other stakeholders and the last principle relates to the responsibilities of the board this principle explains how the board of directors should carry out their responsibilities now we are going to discuss all the major points discussed in UK's code of corporate governance okay so the first point on which the UK code of corporate governance emphasizes is board composition that how the board of directors of a listed company be composed the board should comprise a balance of executive directors headed up by the chief executive so chief executive is the head of all the executive directors a non executive director headed up by the chairman so what is the purpose of having a balance of executive and non executive directors having a balance of executive and non executive director means there should be an equal number of executive and non executive directors having a balanced board will mean that board decisions are not influenced by one group of directors as you know the decisions of board making are done with the voting if any resolution is presented and majority votes in the favor of that resolution that resolution will be accepted and implementation will be done upon it in case if a company has executive directors more in number and non executive directors less in number then what will happen all the decisions will be done in favor of executive directors because they are more in number they have more votes whereas if there is equal number of executive and non executive directors non executive director being independent would assess whether the decision is in the best interest of the shareholders or not and if the decision is not in the best interest of the shareholder they would vote against it okay the role of chairman and chief executive officer should be held by two separate people to avoid concentration of power so this is also a very important point related to composition of the board of director that same person should not be the ceo and the chairman ceo should be a separate person and chairman should be a separate person and the reason behind this is that ceo is accountable to the chairman because chairman is the head of the full board if ceo himself is the chairman it means he has no accountability and he has unfettered powers which he can misuse for his personal interest next 
is the roles of executive directors and non executive directors or what is the difference between their roles the executive directors have responsibility for running the company on day to day basis so executive directors are the ones who are actually you know managing the company every department has one head and that head is an executive director like finance director is the head of finance department he is an executive director sales director is the head of sales department he is an executive director um likewise um, um marketing director is the head of marketing department he is an executive director so every department has a head who is an executive director and he is ultimately responsible for controlling his department so executive directors in addition to managing the company on day to day basis also are involved in decision making at board level now let's see what is the role of non executive directors the non executive directors monitor the executive directors and contribute to the overall strategy and direction of the organization whenever the strategy of the company is developed it is done with the consensus of executive and non executive directors non executive directors are usually employed on part time basis and do not take part in routine executive management of the company so this is the main difference executive directors are the permanent employees of the company whereas non executive directors are you know not the employees of the company they would only come in the company for attending the board meetings which is why they are not financially dependent upon the company because they are not getting a monthly salary from the company they would only be paid for the meetings that they attend so per meeting they are paid a fixed amount all right moreover non executive directors do not you know contribute in day to day activities so therefore they are independent their thought process is independent they do not have any financial stakes involved in the company so whatever decisions they would take or they would support would be on the basis of best interest of shareholders and not based upon their personal interest now let's see advantages of participation by net so what is the advantages of having equal number of non executive directors in the board number one oversight of the whole board so the purpose of having non executive directors in the board is so that they can oversee the activities of the executive directors then as they are independent they can act as a corporate consultants again they would make sure that only those decisions are taken which are in the best interest of the shareholders so this guideline of corporate governance is going to ensure the guideline that there should be equal number of executive and non executive director in board is going to ensure that the company is managed in the best interest of shareholders they bring external expertise to the company how how are they going to bring external expertise to the company generally non executive directors working in one company are executive director of some other company say for example if there are two telecom companies company a and company b executive director of telecom company a is working as a non executive director of telecom company b so the company where he is working as a non executive director he would bring in external expertise his experiences of working in company a which would help in developing more effective strategies and more effective decision making so this is how non executive directors bring external expertise to the company like advantages there are some disadvantages of non executive directors as well they and the sub committees may not be sufficiently well informed or have time to fulfill their role completely uh, we'll discuss sub committees in the later part of this chapter generally non executive directors because they are not the full time employees of the company and they do not uh, you know uh, involve themselves in day to day operation therefore they are not very much well informed about the company and they have to rely upon the information shared by the executive directors so this is one disadvantage uh, of non executive directors that they have limited knowledge about the company moreover due to their commitments in the company where they are working full time they might not give the required time 
to fulfill their role as a non executive director so this is again another disadvantage and apart from that there is another disadvantage and that is extra cost definitely when non executive directors are hired the company has to pay them some amount for attending the board of directors meetings and that is going to be an extra cost for the company now let's see what are these sub committees or these are also referred as sub board committees so there are four sub board committees we'll discuss them one by one starting with remuneration committee as the name explains the role of remuneration committee is to set the remuneration package for the executive directors as i have already explained that the biggest problem in the public limited companies is that control is in the hands of executive directors and sometimes what they do is they keep their remuneration packages very high as a result of that expense increases and profit for distribution amongst the shareholders reduces a lot so the purpose of remuneration committee is to set the remuneration packages of executive directors this is to ensure that they are not paid excessive amounts but are paid fairly for their role so the purpose of remuneration committee is to make sure that executive directors are paid according to the services that they are rendering for the company the committee will comprise non executive directors so it is the guideline of the best practice of corporate governance that remuneration committee should be comprised of non executive directors only so that no executive director is involved in setting his own remuneration package now let's discuss what are the advantages of having the remuneration committee no director is involved in setting his own pay as already explained performance related element will be included to avoid the risk that directors are rewarded for poor performance so what would the remuneration committee do they would keep more percentage of performance related pay in the director's remuneration as and less percentage of fixed salary or non performance related salary it would encourage the directors to improve their performance and as a result the performance of the company would also improve which is going to be in the interest of the shareholders the example of performance related pay could be bonuses based upon profit targets or bonuses based upon revenue targets etc the second um, sub board committee is nomination committee now let's see what the nomination committee is its name is also self explanatory the role of nomination committee is to decide on appointments of executive directors this is to ensure the best person for the job is recruited the majority of this committee should be non executive directors when majority of the members are non executive directors then definitely majority's decision will be accepted so the purpose of nomination committee is to ensure that the appointment of only a deserving and a competent persons is done as executive directors because if executive directors are doing this task they might be appointing their relatives and friends without considering whether they are eligible for the job or not which would definitely affect the performance of the company now let's discuss the advantages of nomination committee executive director might might appoint other directors who they are friends with or used to work with but wouldn't necessarily have the require uh, skills required so what would happen if as already explained if executive directors are appointing other executive directors they might appoint their friends and relatives without considering whether they are fit for the job or not it reduces the risk of improperly affecting board decisions how executive might appoint people to the board they know will vote in favor of the same decision as them and can therefore influence board decisions which may not be in the best interest of the company 
so for example if the ceo has to appoint a director he would appoint those people about he uh, whom he is sure that they are never going to vote against him so as a result what will happen all the decisions will always be as per the wish of the ceo and most probably those decisions would not be in the best interest of the company and thus the shareholders then comes the next sub board committee which is risk committee the risk committee will be responsible for advising the board on company's risk appetite risk appetite means the maximum amount of risk that the company is willing to take reviewing and approving the risk management strategy so risk management strategy is how to manage the risk how to reduce it and advising the audit committee and board on risk exposure so these are the roles of the risk committee let's see what are the advantages of having a risk committee in a company um so let's see what are the advantages advantages of having the risk committee it would companies risk management okay so the presence of risk committee is going to improve the uh, company's risk management and it is going to reduce the risk and thus the losses faced by the company then comes the last sub board committee which is the audit committee and which is the most relevant committee for the work of external auditor following are the objectives of the audit committee number 1 increasing public confidence in the credibility of published financial information number 2 assisting directors particularly executive directors in meeting their responsibilities in respect of the financial reporting how we are going to discuss it uh in the later part number 3 strengthening the independent position of company external auditor by providing additional channel of communication so these are the four three objectives of having the audit committee uh in the later part of this lecture you will understand how these objectives are achieved membership of audit committee the committee should have at least three members if a company is a smaller one then two two members and one thing which is very important to mention here all non executives all the members of the audit committee should be non executive directors there should be no executive director involved in the audit committee okay at least one member should have recent and relevant financial experience with an appropriate professional accountancy qualification so this is again another requirement of audit committee that out of these three non executive members at least one member should have recent financial experience and qualification only then the committee would be able to assist director in meeting their responsibility in respect of financial reporting because if none of the members have knowledge and experience about financial reporting then they won't be able to guide the and assist the directors in meeting their responsibilities related to financial reporting now let's discuss the function of the audit committee monitoring the integrity of financial statements it is a very important function of the audit committee audit committee throughout the year monitors the process of financial reporting and its integrity and this is how first objective is met increasing public confidence in the credibility of financial information when public shareholders and other stakeholder knows that there is a audit committee in the company they will have confidence over the credibility of the financial reporting because they know that independent committee comprised of independent non executive directors is continuously monitoring the process of financial reporting then their second role Uh, is reviewing the company's internal financial controls if you remember internal financial controls are the controls related to the preparation of financial statements and these controls ensures that there are minimum um, errors and manipulations in the financial statements then their next role is monitoring and reviewing the effectiveness of internal audit function see if there is an 
independent audit committee in the company and internal audit function is working under them this is going to improve the independence of the internal audit function but if on the other hand internal audit function is working under any executive director then their independence would be doubtful making a recommendation in relation to appointment and removal of the external auditor and their remuneration if you recall the process of appointment of external auditors external auditors are appointed by the shareholders but recommendation is given by either the audit committee or by the board if executive directors are giving recommendation about the external auditor appointment they might recommend those external auditors who are under their influence but if this recommendation is done by independent audit committee then obviously they are going to recommend those external auditors who are actually independent of the company then their next role is reviewing and monitoring the external auditors independence on objectivity and effectiveness of the audit process so throughout the audit the audit committee would monitor the independence of external auditor because as if you recall the chapter of ethics we discussed that there could be a situations where when auditor joined was independent but during the audit something happens and he lost his independence so that that is why audit committee would keep on monitoring the independence of the external auditors throughout the audit then the next role is developing and implementing policy on engagement of external auditor to supply non audit services again if you recall the chapter of ethics we discussed that if auditors give other services non audit services to the clients like taxation services internal audit services consultation etc it could cause self review as well as advocacy threat even self interest threat due to fee dependency for the auditors so what audit committee would do they will make a policy upon what non audit services can be obtained from external auditors and what non audit services cannot be obtained from the external auditors then the next role is reviewing arrangement for confidential reporting by employees and investigation of possible imp uh, improperties which is termed as whistle blowing whistle blowing is basically when a junior employee gets to know about some fraudulent activity of a senior employee there should be an appropriate channel where he could go and blow the whistle and that appropriate channel is access to the chairman so audit committee would make sure that the whistle blowing arrangements in the company are reasonable or not so this is again going to improve the control environment of the company now let's discuss the benefits of having the audit committee increase public confidence in the audit opinion as the audit committee will monitor the independence of the external auditors so having in the audit committee in the company is going to increase the confidence of the shareholders and other users upon the audit report the internal audit function will report to audit committee increasing their independence as already explained if the internal auditors are under any executive directors they might not be independent but if they are under independent audit committee their independence will also be enhanced the skill knowledge and expertise of audit committee member can be valuable resource for a business again as explained that at least one member of the audit committee should have recent financial experience so his experience and knowledge could help company in improving its financial strategies and then it may be easier and cheaper to arrange finance as the presence of an audit committee can give perception of good corporate governance so the you know finance providers would have less doubts about, uh, over the uh, repayment of the loan and they would give the loan to the company with a greater confidence apart from uh, some uh, various advantages there are some disadvantages of having the audit committee as well and these are the very you know general disadvantages and what are these difficulty recruit difficulties recruiting the right non executive directors who have relevant skill experience and sufficient time to become effective member of the committee 
as already described at least one member of the audit committee should have recent financial experience so the greatest problem with the corporate governance is finding a person with recent financial experience to be included in the audit committee and the other disadvantage is same as the disadvantages of having non executive director the cost non executive directors are normally remunerated and their fee can be quite expensive because generally non executive directors are remunerated per meeting so when they are involved in sub board committees the number of meetings would increase when the number of meetings would increase it would also increase the cost of the company and this is again a disadvantage of uh, audit committee as well as all the other sub board committees so this was all about the chapter of uh, corporate governance uh tomorrow we'll start the last chapter of our course which is internal audit so this was all for today thank you